Maggie's mad at me and Scott's in a bad mood. This is going to be fun today. Must be Tuesday. It's, it's not Monday. Tuesday. It's Hello and welcome to another episode of Plain Truth, a Holy Spirited podcast. I am Maggie Ulmer and I'm here in the studio at United Theological Seminary with... Scott Kisker. David Watson. And our special guest... Jason Thorne. Hello, Jason, and thank you for Hello, being with Jason. us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Scott? What? Nothing. I just thought it was funny. You were like, hello, Jason. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, How do we all know Jason? We're all all friends, and we go to the same church, some of us. I don't, but yeah. yeah. But you could, but you couldn't. We're all the same church. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're all. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ together. Amen. Amen. But Jason and I hang out a lot. We we went to Kenya together last year. He's going back in November of this year. I can't go. And uh, I would like to go, but I just can't make it on this trip. All right. Well, before we jump into Kenya, which all of this is related to, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a veterinarian here in Dayton, Ohio. I've been practicing here for about 15 years, been out of school for about 20. Awesome. And so we're here. We wanted to have you on the podcast because um, there's just a really cool story that is sort of unfolded. So you went to Kenya with David, and it was a spirit and truth trip? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was supposed to be a much bigger trip, but... for a variety of reasons, a number of people couldn't go, so it was really just six men that went. Well, yeah. was that oh, that's right. It was during it COVID. It was yeah. dead middle of COVID. Yeah. That's well, right. It was no, it was last October. Was that dead middle of COVID? Yes, still, there. It was the yeah. spike of the. Um, here, I remember what happened. It was a spike of the most sort of like recent Omicron. Yeah, the Omicron, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Omicron yeah, and the rise, and then they were saying that if you tested positive, they wouldn't let you back in. And if okay, like so in yes, this country. Yeah. There yeah. were a lot of. Uh, potential problems but you yes. guys went so the group got whittled down pretty narrow yeah there we was six of us there was two of us from stillwater church in dayton jason and me mm-hmm. and then four people from springdale first umc in andrew thompson friend of the show andrew thompson andrew wasn't there Shout out. but it's his church his yeah. church yes. yeah his Shout church and there were four guys four great yeah. dudes mm-hmm. from his church uh including um a friend of ours steve smith Mm -hmm. Uh, who's also on the board of Spirit and Truth and also on the board Board of United United. Seminary. And um, so we we spent a number of days there and just Davies, our friend Davies Masigo. Who's been on the podcast. Who's been on the podcast. Friend of the show. revolves around. Friend of the show, Davies Masigo, took us around uh, Matari Slum, which is the third largest slum in Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. And... it's the second largest in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, the first is in South Africa, and the next two are in, are around mm-hmm. Nairobi, yeah. Yeah. Kibera, Kibera, and uh, Matari. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then specifically, we're in a sub estate, Haruma. Her- is where, yeah. Haruma is where we went. So Davies is a UMC pastor in Africa, and he's pastor of the Haruma Tent of Prayer, and he's also. Uh, um, works for Spirit and Truth actually in Africa and you guys were there and hanging out with that community and why don't you just I don't know just tell us a little bit about what happened yeah what unfolded as all things that start with David, it was like, we'll find out. The Lord will show it to us. <laughs> so wait, I, I've, heard, I've heard a little bit of this, and I love this part. David says, hey, come to Africa. And you're like, why would I do that? He's like, we'll find out. You'll figure it out. You'll find out when you're there. This is how this works. That's That was the answer I was given. And, and which is Meaning not, the Holy Spirit. Yes. which And he was 100% correct. Let me start with that. But it, oh, it's very unnerving now. for somebody like myself who's like, What's the plan? Where are we going? Mm. I need, and I'm not like a detail guy. I'm a big picture guy, a mm-hmm, vision guy. So mm-hmm. I need to like know what I'm heading into. So the way that got started was I had about a month and a half before this trip that I was very angsty, mm. I would say as a word. And I kept saying, David, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. David, what am I doing? How many times did I ask you that? A lot a, of times. A fair number of times. A lot of real. times. And he's like, you'll figure it out. It'll come to you. And so anyways... 
Anywho. It, it, so, anywho, the, the long story short of this is I started thinking about where we were going, mm-hmm. and then it sort of dawned on me. And I think this is where the veterinary side of me comes in mm-hmm. because I'm like, public health is a mm-hmm. big thing for veterinarians. And I'm like, obviously, this is the poorest, one of the poorest places on the planet. Had you been to Africa before? No, but I did some research and I mm-hmm. kind of started getting a lay of the ground of what's really going on in that area. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I had access to Davies, so I asked Davies a couple questions through WhatsApp and stuff, and it got me thinking. I'm like, water. Because, like, in veterinary medicine, it's all about preventative care. So it's harder to fix somebody that's ill than it is to prevent illness from occurring. So mm-hmm. in the veterinary world, we're all about herd health. And I don't want to think of people as a herd, but in this case, that's what you do. Well, we've just been, yeah, we we've just just been through been that. Through through COVID, yeah, we've just been through that. So health. I think yeah. that's a little more understanding now. Yeah. People have more of awareness now than ever. But this is what we do as veterinarians. So we started with, I, I said, I want to start with water. Because water is where a lot of our health comes from and Parasites. and disease, mm-hmm. exactly. So long story short, from there, I say that a lot, long story short, and then they're not short. Um, <laughs> I started going back in what I knew about water, and that's backpacking. I, I grew up doing a lot of backpacking and uh, filters, and so I use these very simple filters. And they're... They're basically water filters that are based out, and now I nerd out here for a second, but they're they're based off of the membranes that are used in dialysis machines. Oh, cool. Is kind of the foundation of them, but they're just semi-permeable membranes that are really small poured, and they can filter out um, pretty small uh, micro microbes. And it's filtering. It's not purifying. That's a big, big difference. I mean... When you use these things, you're pulling out about 95% of what can cause most problems, the wow. major hitters. So they're not perfect, perfect, but they go a really long way for what you get out of them. Yeah, I mean, 95% for somebody who's going from, from 95 or nothing? From zero to 95 <laughs> is pretty good, you know. right? Significant. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. a significant number. And uh, so these filters, I looked into these filters. I said, okay, these Sawyer filters. Well, I got on their website. Next thing I know, I'm starting to dig deeper. Well, that lo and behold, they have a bucket program that's already in place and internationally used all around. And I was able to, with help with Spirit and Truth, and uh, I could use them as an NGO. I was able to get their NGO buckets uh, systems, which is exactly same little, same exact little filter I used in my backpack, mm-hmm. except it hooks onto a bucket, and it's a neat, cute little system. It's super easy and po- mobile and easy to implement. So I took 100 in. I basically bought them on a whim, just said, I'm going to do this. Took 100 in and then uh, got stopped in customs at 1 in the morning and had to pay a little extra because of customs. <laughs> because you can't bring anything into Kenya without customs, no matter what it's for. Um, that was an interesting middle of the night. Like, am I going to lose these 100 filters that I just drug halfway across the world? Hmm. Uh, and they did a really good job when we got there. That's awesome. So that's... The filters did. The filters did. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, there's... We've been going from there. Um, but so tell me... I So I'm trying to picture these filters, like, on a pail. Like, do you yeah. pour the water through the no. membrane so and into the, a pail? Or how does that The filter itself is about... It's about six inches long. It's a little round thing. Mm-hmm. It has a little nozzle on it. It hooks onto a small tube... The tube goes up to the bucket, and it works off of gravity. Okay. So you, so the tube goes up in the air above the bucket, and the filter stops working. You drop the tube and the filter down below the bucket level, and it starts pouring. Okay. It's really simple, gravity-operated. Mm-hmm. And it just and then you can back flush these filters when they get clogged up with these little micro fibers that are in them, the, the hollow tubes that are inside them. Mm-hmm. You can back flush them, and they have the amazing part. They have a 10-year lifespan. Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not sure this would make a lot of practical sense, but a 10-year impact for one filter for a family of 10 is huge. Hmm. Um, Liberia, a little backstory on why I thought these were the right filters. Sawyer International, which is the water filter company, they partnered with Liberia and a bunch of charities, and Liberia is considered, quote, unquote, a clean water country now 
Mm. And that's through because of their filters. 165,000 filters. Wow. In Liberia. That's a and 63 of well, 63,000 wells or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's on their webpage, all the details. But the impact is this. The bottom line is if you can drink clean water and you don't get sick, the household income increases by 10%. Right. And that is dramatic in that setting. I mean, that's dramatic in yeah. any setting. David, you can speak on, you know, the, the life, you know, well, situations. Well, I mean, I the, in Machare, life is really hard, mm. like really hard. And um, when we think about poverty in, in the United States, a lot of times we think about, for example, food shortage or famine or something like that. Um, or perhaps lack of access to housing. Or, or food deserts, right? Yeah, like, like that's, right. You know. But in this case, in, a, in fact, in a lot of places, an even more pressing need is clean water. Because if you can't get clean water, you can't get healthy, right? That's a baseline for everything else. And in these slums, and, and it's not just in Matari, it's in lots of places, but in these slums, um, you really don't have access to clean water. Now, sometimes um, trucks will come in, like Spirit and Truth has brought in a number of trucks to Matare, and people fill up jerry cans and get clean water in that way. Um, But while we were there, um, the guys uh, we were with um, put together an idea for a well, and um, through a connection, that had been made through Springdale First UMC. Mm-hmm. Um, we met with a guy. What's his name? Art Thomas. Is that right? Yeah. Art. And Art Davis. Art. Yeah. Art, Art Davis. Davis. Yeah. Art Davis. That's correct. And uh, we met with. A, he owns a company that drills wells in Kenya, and so uh, and he is Kenyan, um, and. Uh, the, exactly. the, Actually, the, David, the, he's not Kenyan. He was born in Pennsylvania. Really? He, he was a child, a missionary child. Oh, right. He but lives he grew in up, Kenya. He grew up mm-hmm. in Kenya. He grew up yeah. Kenyan, yeah. and he resides there, but he is dual citizen, I think. Okay. And so, anyway, the group raised money enough to build a well now that puts out thousands of gallons of water per day um, in Haruma, which was is a neighborhood of Matare. And, I mean, these slums are so big, they have their own regions to them. And then between this and the water filters, um, we have, uh, I think, I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it is making an impact. And and so one of the things that Davies has done with these filters is he's gotten them into a lot of schools. Yeah. And yeah. Um, these kids, you know, they have to miss a lot of school because they're sick. They're sick a lot of the time because they have bad water. And yeah. so this is this is making a difference. Yeah. This is my favorite story, by the way, of the whole thing. Well, because tell it. I am going to because he set me up perfect for that. <laughs> but the the story of the kids is is this. We put those filters together on, like, Tuesday. And... Several of the buckets went to the school that Ruma Tenapera supports. And we had visited that school on Monday. So we saw those kids on Monday. We built the filters on Tuesday, and they took them over, and we did other things through the week. At the end of the week, we kind of did a big kind of breakdown of everything going on. And the team said, I said, how are the filters working? You know, like any technical problems or anything with the filters in the school? And they said, no, all the kids are there. And I'm like, of course all the kids are there. They're at school. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. All the kids are there. They didn't miss school because they were sick. Mm-hmm. They didn't mm-hmm. miss school because they had diarrhea, which is the number one. They say stomach problems there. That's the polite way mm-hmm. of telling everybody that you're off for the day. You're mm-hmm. like, I'm having stomach problems. And uh, no, no children had stomach problems and missed school for that week. And then the other thing it kind of – put me on this course of, of filters and kind of I kind of reassured me that I was on the right track. The church, I had brought those hundred in for the church, assuming that they were just going to go to families in the church. They put those in the school. The church said the kids did so good. They took the rest of the filters and they put two filters into every other school in 
Haruma, and they are not associated with the church. These were school kids from all over the place. So just to, to clarify that, so you brought filters for the people of the church, and they saw the impact that it had on their school. And their kids. And their kids, and they basically said, let's share this. With let's share it with the children first. That's cool. And then that was when I, when I got choky. <laughs> <laughs> I choked up. I'm like, all right, I'm in. And uh, so they put the – Davies gave me a number, and I think it was 80 – They've had 80 schools now, mm. and, you know, when you look at these schools, these they kind of work on like a charter school type of system. Sure. So those schools have anywhere from 50 to 100 kids. Mm -hmm. So we have 80 schools. That's, that's what, 6,000 kids with water. Bang. Like instantly. So that's an impact right out of the gate. Yeah, it is. I mean, 6,000 is not a small number. No. no. Now, when you're looking at Matari and what you got, 500,000 to 800,000 are the estimates because there is no real census there. So yeah. that's the <laughs> estimates of how many people live in here. I mean, there's but a it's lot over, of impact to be done. It's over 60,000 people per square kilometer. Yeah. It's just, it, I've never been in a place where so dense with human people, beings. With yeah. human beings. Yeah. And it was like, no wonder people get sick here. Like, mm -hmm. it's everywhere. Okay. So. You have this experience. You take 100 water filters. It makes a dramatic and immediate impact. Mm -hmm. And then what? So we take a very long flight home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you have a lot of time to reflect. Mm -hmm. And you're processing things that you've never seen before. Mm. And you're changed in the way you think about everything. And before the podcast, we were talking about what do you get when you go on international missions? You get changed. Yeah. You don't change everybody else. You get changed. Mm. And that, so I went through that process a awesome. little bit. It does, it does change you to sure. be in these contexts. I mean, it has an impact on you. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a guy who went, a young, young, younger guy, younger than us anyway, <laughs> who, who went on the trip and, it changed his whole life path. Life path, like yeah. the entire trajectory of his life. He switched careers. I mean, he yeah. he was so profoundly impacted by uh, what he saw there, yeah. and um, and that's one of the reasons. I mean, there are many reasons that I take people to Cuba and Kenya. Um, it changes them. They bring something back. It's not just a one-way transaction, right? Yeah. It's not just yeah. us helping them. I mean, the American church has incredible resources. We don't realize how rich we are mm -hmm. until we go someplace like Matari or Central Havana, and then we realize, whoa, we're loaded. And so uh, even like just middle-class people in the United States, comparatively speaking, are so rich. And so we're blessed to be a blessing, and the American church can do a lot more in these places in order to help people who don't even have access to clean water. You, you know, there was, a, there was a story in Mataria that made that come home. When they, when they, during their services, they, they give offering, and they, everybody walks up and gives offering. And people would walk up, and a shilling, they use shillings, one shilling goes in, and it was a huge deal. That's a huge sacrifice. Ten shillings buys five gallons of water, mm. Mm. and so and what is their total income for the month? Like uh, three I don't thousand know. shillings. Yeah, it's, it's like thirty bucks, mm. thirty thirty American dollars, and they're giving, you know, anything they give in that offering makes is a big sacrifice, and they're sacrificing there. And I'm like, at America, we don't think twice about what we're giving and why we're giving. They're giving it because they were. They were proud to help wherever they could in their own church. And it's just it's just a, such a dramatic yeah. impact. I think um, one of the th one of the reasons I know that Matt, um, gosh, I wish he could be here for this uh, conversation. But um, Matt Reynolds, who's the president of Spirit and Truth, I, I know that one of the reasons that he began to develop a relationship with the Haruma Tent of Prayer and with Davies was because what he saw there was an utter and complete dependence on Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and on the Holy Spirit and devotion to the church. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just as you were saying, you know, when people 
because we are so wealthy in the West, we tend to look at places that may have less wealth and we say, oh, well, obviously the relationship here is about us helping them with wealth. But really, the whole reason that we really began to have relationships with international partners is because while we may have a lot of wealth in terms of material goods, we tend to have a poverty of faith and spirit, mm, yeah. which is something they are extraordinarily wealthy in. Yes. And so um, it always seems like, you know, this is, an, this is a no brainer. It's like we have a ton of the thing that they need and they have the thing that we need. Our sponsor for today is United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. United is a seminary that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit to work through ordinary people faithfully following God's call on their lives. Masters and doctoral degrees equip leaders to carry the historic Christian faith into the world. If God is calling you to ministry, consider United as a place where you can become a bold, spirit-filled leader who makes disciples of Jesus Christ. Learn more at united.edu. I remember um, when you first came back from, or not the first time, but one of the trips you came back from Cuba, David, and you were talking about this phenomenon. Like you take students yeah. to Cuba yeah. because a lot of- Cuba um, changes them. Yeah, yeah, because they've never seen people be healed of blindness. Mm -hmm. And not just like, oh, I have an astigmatism, but <laughs> like, I can't see, the world is dark, <laughs> you know? Right. Or, um, you know- yeah. And I've been blind since birth. <laughs> right, exactly. To see miracles like that or you know, and I remember the first time you came back from her room attentive prayer also, you said you had never seen poverty like that. Mm. But you would also, like their faith was incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that Haruma, you know, Matare is not the only place with poverty like that, but yeah. I'd never been in it before. And I've been to a lot of places, but I'd never been in, in that kind of extreme poverty before. And, you know, one of the things that people say uh, that I that I hear sometimes is, well, look, we've got a lot of poverty here in the United States. What about that? And my response is, we have enough resources to deal with both. We mm -hmm. have enough resources to help people here, and we have enough resources to help people overseas. Yeah. I mean, and we need to do both. And that's the blessing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And so how many filters have you distributed well, now, Jason? Maggie was asking me what, what it was like when on my way back. So yeah. On my oh, way, yeah, I'm sorry. And that, that goes into this question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it goes into this. I was, I was kind of decompressing the whole week, and I think it was put on my heart that I was like, all right, you're going to lean into this, and you're going to put 1,000 filters in by next year. Mm. When did we go? October. It was October, October last, last year. year. Yeah. Oh, so you're coming 21. up on a year deadline. Yeah, I'm coming up on the deadline here. <laughs> uh, the first 400 came quickly. <laughs> the next 200 came with some some uh, angst, and that's about where we're at. We're at somewhere around 650 right now. All right. So coming we need in, to raise money for stretch. 350 more filters, right? We need 350 more filters to hit the goal right. for 1,000. Well, w let's let's just do a little math. I, I, am, I am all for direct communicating. And, and and the expression of direct needs. So 350 filters. Plus what? Yes. So I'm super good at math, and I just did this in my head. <laughs> the or number, four <laughs> times on the calculator, whichever. Yeah. The number, I didn't, I didn't edit anything out. And the number, the amount we need to raise is twelve thousand nine hundred fifty dollars? Let's round it up to thirteen thousand. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do, do that. that. We need to raise thirteen thousand dollars for filters, and I am one hundred percent positive that there is a listener on here or multiple <laughs> listeners who want to give to this project. Okay, yeah. I just had a wave of like childhood memories of PBS. That's what I was thinking of too. It's, it's the what is it, Jerry? Yes, Jerry yes. Lewis. Lewis, Lewis the telethon. The telethon. telethon. Or the, we have a I'm bank of to that. like the PBS show we need, of like. We need the the, the ringing the, the local phones, celebrity. the old timey yeah. ringing phones going on in the background. Yeah, so we totally can do this. This is totally not actually no. um, impossible at no. all. It's it's a surmountable goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so listeners, you've heard, 
You know, many of you are pastors and you um, you have opportunities for missions giving and it's budgeted into your churches and you should, you know, take this to your boards or don't even. Take it to your husband and wife. Yeah. Just, you know. Where I did. <laughs> Yeah, took it right. to your and wife. I mean, if you had 300 people who gave 35 bucks. Yeah, we'd, we'd be done. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to give to this project, yes, um, go to www.spiritandtruth.life. Mm-hmm. Click on global up in the right-hand corner, top right-hand corner, and then you'll see the link for the Haruma project. Mm-hmm. You can go there or you can go directly to our give um link to it's it all goes to the same place and in the give giving note section there's a drop down menu and you can select the Haruma project and um, you know while you're there you can donate to Spirit and Truth too who you know administrates all of these projects so and then you can go over to United Seminary and <laughs> give us make some. a donation there too why not but we're not connected to them so hold on no, I'm, I'm making a Zello account right now for myself. all right I know so. we're all um, just going to launch what do you call it like everybody has a like go a GoFundMe fund me. Oh, yeah right yikes yeah, yeah. The, um, the, the bottom line is that the need in these places is vast. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And the other thing was when I was there, it was just daunting. I'm like, how how can anyone make yeah. a difference? And actually, I know you might not believe this, but David said something very wise. I mean, I might, he, he, I might believe said? you. He, 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 he already said, right. he said, <laughs> you do it one at a time. You do. And yeah. you let God do the rest. That's yeah. right. Nope, that is something actually that we understand very uh, acutely at Spirit and Truth. I mean, you know, whether it's the international missions or whether it's the just the going from churches to church. Like we've been asked before, why is this the model that you choose? And we're like, yeah, we understand it's not like efficient, but um, but. Bringing people to Jesus. Yeah, it is. It is a slow growth process. It's not. Um, there's. It's not terribly efficient. It's really always a matter of the heart, which is why we had Jason on to talk about this and to tell just a little bit of his own experience, because, you know, the the thing is, is this is how it works. You see people who have need. You know what the Lord has done for you. This is a very small thing that you can do for other people who are in your spiritual family. These are Christians. And and um, even if they aren't, it doesn't matter. You know, we're, we're meant to um, clothe the naked and feed the hungry and um, bring water and living water to the thirsty. So yeah. totally worthy, worthy, worthy. So yeah, it's been it's been a fun process. This is like my first. David kind of took me on my first international trip, and he goes, "We're kind of going in the deep end on your first run." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he didn't like warm me up. He's like, "We're going to the like one of the poorest places in the world." And yeah, this you're isn't like enjoy it. going to Canada. <laughs> no, this was not a trip to Canada. It's not like U.S. light, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was definitely like we're going, we're going. I'm I'm taking you on a SWAT team, and we're going into like you know. When I say spiritual SWAT team is what I meant. Yeah. And we're going to go into some of the some of the most needy places mm-hmm. in the world. And it's yeah. been a fun ride. And it, it's been a, it's been a blessing. It's been humbling to me. It's it's given me a lot of friendships with like Davies and, and mm-hmm. the, the folks there. WhatsApp does have a good purpose in life. It's to communicate with people across the world quickly that, Amen. that you can keep hands on and mm-hmm. keep touching so they know they're not alone. All right. So it's it's been a great pleasure to learn to work with those folks. And that was the other beautiful thing about this. It's there this has got two folds to it. There's a I mean that's the water side, but the other side is the evangelism that's coming out of this. Mm-hmm. So if they're if they know how to do one thing in Kenya, it's make stickers and signs. <laughs> <laughs> like within a week of those buckets hitting the ground, there was like Davies had a nice sticker that's very they have a style yeah i would say there's a style of like as many colors as you can get and as many <laughs> and, type fonts and as aesthetic, you possibly can make. Yes. yeah there's an aesthetic oh, to, gosh, yes. to everything and uh, they dubbed the mission this whole uh, mission out of their church as they took them into houses cuz we're beyond the schools now too we've hit the schools in that area now we're working into homes mm. um, we've flirted with going to the west side of kenya to near lake victoria mm-hmm. um 
to some of the villages because they get floods mm. and their mm. wells get mm. contaminated like really fast. And so far we had about 50 filters there and the that's been a hit. Like that might actually end up being a new target area because Davy said the testimonies are even more dramatic mm. coming that's out awesome. of there because people do get sick so much easier out of the ground contaminated water mm. versus – and you said we we're talking about getting trucks in with water and the jerry cans and the veterinarian in me just cringes because there's this thing called cross contamination that nobody ever thinks about. And you should see when David says jerry cans, he should describe the jerry cans that really were used to be vegetable oil cans right. that are being converted that have been carried through the dirty streets mm-hmm. and then carried to the water source and then touched by 15 people as they're touching the water. That's why the filters sit in the homes, because even the water they're getting out of the wells can get cross contaminated mm-hmm. by the time it gets home. That, that's the veterinary part of me going, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's not clean water. <laughs> clean water is when it's out of the filter, into the glass, and in your mouth. It's good uh, to have a man of science on this project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A man of science. But yes. uh, <laughs> the the outreach component of this, um, I think Davies named it the Wells of uh, Wells of Samaria, I think. I can't remember. You can't remember? I think no. that's why you named it. But we also have a couple of good videos. Um, really talented guy named Patrick Hall went with us mm-hmm. on this last trip, and he made some really good videos about the project. Yeah, they're on YouTube. Do you know the link on that? I, I can get the link, and I'll put them in the show notes. Put them in the show notes because that is a hard – it's one of those YouTube links that's like 50,000 different letters and numbers, and I'm dyslexic, so I'll never get <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I'll put it in the show notes. I'll put links in the show notes to – uh, these videos. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, he did a nice job putting that together, and there's some video of us talking about it. We were debriefing that day, so it's really that was a fresh time for us to talk about everything. Yeah, we saw. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's amazing what God's doing through Spirit mm-hmm. and Truth, mm-hmm. and the way that um, lives are being changed all over the world. So I'm grateful for this ministry, and uh, that's why I support it. And listeners. We need to raise $13,000. Yeah. Here's the thing. We joke all the time that we have five listeners, but we know how many listeners we have. So we know that there's enough. <laughs> so let's go. Let's get it done. Please and thank you. Yeah. Please and thank you. I, I promise you they're going to good people. They're going to good homes. And they're going – it's directly out of spirit and truth. They yeah. cut the check yeah. right to the distributor in Kenya. Like there is – Talk about as efficient and clean yeah, a no system. Yeah, no middleman. There is zero middleman. And then it goes straight to the pastoral team that picks them up at the airport and then takes them off. So Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. It's not It's not like part of your donor. Like 99% of the yeah. money that you give That's is going correct. directly to That's the That's right. That's why I asked for a separate <laughs> donation to Spirit and Truth. Yeah. <laughs> So what? There's like administration the, because things? we don't take anything. The, God bless yeah, you. We, I love you for it. The, there's a bit of a process. There's a small processing fee to get the money over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, it's a, but that's included it's in what you're yeah. giving. Yeah, yeah. That's so tiny. it's it's a really small and actually no, it's a complete blessing. And um, we're glad you're doing yeah. this. I keep getting messages from the guys on WhatsApp. We could use another hundred. We could use another hundred. I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm working on <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, we are working on it. So we're going to update you listeners when we raise this money. That's right. Yeah. And, I mean, really, it could, it could be and like the next podcast. I, I also be. could get you another video link cause, or get at least some media. So when I go over that, because I'm heading over to follow up on the program in the well here. So. That'll be great. Is the well in the well is right? the well is right outside in it's in Haruma. Uh, Haruma. And it's uh-huh. right outside the school. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks to Springdale on that one. And it's up and running. So uh, yeah. the team I'm going back with, we're kind of touching base on the well project. We're touching base on the filters. Matt's going. He's touching base on pastoral uh, mm-hmm. development that he's been doing there. So everybody's got their little mini mission that we're yeah. doing as yeah. we hit the ground there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if – like anytime you are – when you contribute to, you know, the things related to her, the Haruma project there, I mean, the water thing is a, is a it's really – It's a facet. Yeah, but it's a really important and primary one right now in particular. But in the past, we've also built – 
the school, the yeah. Room Attentive Prayer School. There's also a lot of pastoral theological education that happens through Spirit and Truth over there through video. And it's just, it's a huge impact. It's it's really, when you give to this, you're having a huge impact. So, so Can we talk it. about the school for just a half a second? Do it. All right. Because that was a huge one. And that's actually probably the catalyst that got everything started, yeah, to that, be honest. Yeah. And when when did Davies come over? Was it three years ago, four years ago? Well, he's Remember? been over almost every – well, that, no, not during COVID. Started. It was before COVID. Yeah. Davies came and visited. It must – I went there for the first time in 2018, and so it must have been the in 2019. Year. Okay, yeah. so 2019. I get invited to a party, and I walk in. You're there because we had that big discussion about – I'm talking to Scott. Yeah. Scott, we had this huge discussion about maple syrup and teaching Davies about real maple syrup versus, versus like fake maple Mrs. syrup. Butterworth. Do you remember I this like whole Mrs. thing? This I whole vaguely debacle? remember yeah. that. Oh man, I got a good memory about this stuff. <laughs> so, but we're there and and Matt was telling us what was going on and a, a few people that I know, we got together and um, we gave Spirit and Truth some money mm-hmm. for uh, cool. for the school. And we didn't really know it was just getting launched. Yeah. So, and I didn't think much about it after that and then I got I walk in because I'm I got filters on the brain when I hit uh, Nairobi for the first time and they take me to school and suddenly Davies is like this is the school that you helped build yeah I'm like and it it absolutely took my breath away yeah it was amazing yeah because a lot of kids there they They have a lot of kids there because previously they were meeting in their church for school and the and you guys, I haven't been there, but it's, you've been to the church and it's... It's literally 20 by 40 and they had 80 kids in there. Yeah, small. So it was a big deal. Yeah, to get all in school. one room, all talking right. to the ones, trying to teach them. So they were able to get the little school in. Yeah. And they've already built on a school. So we got money raised uh, through Spirit and Truth around the country. I don't know all the donors. Yeah. But people have really responded. The the the, the school is amazing. Yeah, what it's... They're doing there. I mean, shoot, it's an... <laughs> It's like a, it's one of those things that's just really easy to give to because you're like, well, everything here is good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's <laughs> like the, nothing here is not There's going one well. thing. They do not waste a dime. Yeah. Everything that. goes straight to some need. And the so. needs are so many. Uh, poor Davies. Sometimes I feel bad for him because the whole community constantly comes to them for, for every need. And, mm. and he's a provider. And. And he does such a phenomenal job on it, and I can imagine the pressure he well, carries. Well, you know, I the, before I long before I went to uh, Nairobi, I was involved in Cuba. Yeah. And the you know the church we've had Audria Nunez Ortiz mm-hmm. on the podcast before. She's a friend of the podcast, and so you know she and her husband Guillermo are. I mean, that church is such a hub mm-hmm. for outreach. They're feeding a ton of people. I mean, they're just doing so much. They have so many people who who depend on them. And it's the same way with Davies. Yeah. He they, just they he carries their, a heavy weight. They carry a heavy weight. They're a hub of support. I mean, when we were there, Davies was talking about during COVID, the government services shut down. He was picking up HIV meds and taking them to people's houses, keeping people alive. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And he was taking that upon himself yeah. to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, actually, if I on the on the Spirit and Truth website too, there are a couple. If you scroll back through some um, our blog posts, we have some blog posts posted by Davies that just give a testimony to just the kind of work that he does there. And then there's a lot of information on the global page about all of our global initiatives. So you should read about all of those and um, and just, yeah, pray, discern and support this very worthy, worthy mission. Amen. So we're really glad you're on the podcast today, Jason. Thanks, Thank Maggie. you. Hey. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I know. We, uh, you came into all of our uh, quote unquote planning chaos, which is to say we don't really plan a whole lot. We just let the Lord lead. Mm-hmm. Is that what Again, you call back it? to David's. <laughs> is that what, what you What are we going to do, David? It? The Lord will show us. Yeah, yeah. You know, I you're not the only person who's like, a little plan doesn't hurt anything. But to David, it does. It's like an allergy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, I've been around David long enough to know that walking in faith like that does pay off. It so. does. Thank you, Jason. Whatever. I'm here, buddy. I'm here, I'm Scott, here, are you listening? Are you hearing this, Scott? 
<laughs> la, 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 la. All right. <laughs> That's been our podcast for today. You guys, um, check us out on our social media at Holy Spirit Pod on Twitter and give us a like and a follow on Facebook and share the podcast. That is just the highest compliment you can pay us. And thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate appreciate you guys. We'll come back to you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.